new exploitation metric is getting tested, Signal reacts to recall, and AI found a Linux bug. I'm Allie Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. KEV, CEV, CVSS, EPSS, all of these terms are used in industry to talk about and describe vulnerabilities. So what's one more term? NIST and CISA joined forces to introduce a new metric for calculating the likelihood a vulnerability has been exploited in the wild. In a technical paper published on May 19th, 2025, the likely exploited vulnerability or LEV metric was proposed. Why does something like the LEV need to exist versus what's already out there? The formal abstract for the paper states, only a small fraction of tens of thousands of software and hardware vulnerabilities that are published every year will be exploited. Predicting which ones is important for the efficiency and cost effectiveness of enterprise vulnerability remediation efforts. Currently, such remediation efforts rely on the Exploit Prediction Scoring System, EPSS, which has known inaccurate values and the known exploited vulnerability lists, which may not be comprehensive. The proposed likelihood metric may augment EPSS remediation, correcting some inaccuracies and KEV lists, enabling measurements of comprehensiveness. The new metric is not aiming to replace the KEV list or existing values, but instead augment, as it explained, in order to provide a metric to help them do things like prioritize vulnerability remediation, help teams identify underscored vulnerabilities in existing lists that may need more focus, and measure the expected value of vulnerabilities that actors may have exploited. The new value is deterministic, meaning it can be calculated and reproduced the same every single time it is calculated. The new formula uses dates when first given an EPSS score and the present date, as well as a weighing system. This new metric has not formally been adopted yet, but the NIST is looking to move forward with testing the LEV probabilities with industry partners to measure its performance. Just like Regina, George, and Fetch, Microsoft keeps trying to make recall happen, and this time Signal Messenger is not happy. For those unfamiliar, Microsoft first announced their Windows native AI search system Recall on May 20th, 2024, happy one year. Recall was to be included in all Windows machines and would take and process screenshots of the system in order to create a generic system-wide search. The release of Recall has not been an easy one with security researchers immediately breaking into its alleged secure memory storage, continuing to push it off and Microsoft's constant attempts to continue to put it into Windows systems. In a new move against its inclusion, major messaging app Signal has taken a stance against recall. On April 10th, 2025, Microsoft announced that it would move forward with its inclusion of recall in Windows 11 systems, and the entire universe groaned. Signal announced that in response to the concerns about the safety of the screenshotting and processing of content on Windows machines, they will be preventing screenshots in Signal Messenger on Windows machines by default. Signal officially writes, if you attempt to take a screenshot of Signal Desktop when the screen security is enabled, nothing will appear. This limitation can be frustrating, but it might look familiar to you if you've ever had the audacity to try and take a screenshot of a movie or TV show on Windows. According to Microsoft's official developer documentation, setting the correct digital rights management or DRM flag on the application window will ensure that, quote, content won't show up in recall or any other screenshot application. So that's exactly what Signal Desktop is now doing on Windows 11 by default. Signal has also published instructions on how to turn off this feature for those who would want to recall and have it recall your Signal messages if you really want that. A development in cybersecurity has emerged as a researcher, Sean Heelan, discovered a critical zero-day vulnerability in the Linux kernel's SMB implementation using OpenAI's O3 language model. The vulnerability, identified as CVE-2025-37899, is a use-after-free flaw located in the KSMDB module, which handles SMB3 protocol operations within the kernel. Specifically, the issue arises in the handler for the SMB logoff command. In certain conditions, concurrent connections can lead to a scenario where a user session object is freed while still being accessed by another thread, potentially allowing remote attacks attackers to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. 
The actual vulnerability found lies in the way KSMDB handles session teardown, as mentioned, specifically in the SMB2 SES log off function. When an SMB log off command is received, the session's reference count is decremented, and if it hits zero, the session is freed. The issue is that the session pointer is still accessed after it's free. Helan employed OpenAI's O3 model without any additional tools or frameworks. While benchmarking O3's capability against known vulnerabilities, the model identified this previously unknown flaw, marking a significant milestone in AI-assisted vulnerability research. Helan was specifically evaluating OpenAI's O3 model for its ability to reason about and discover bugs directly from source code. He gave O3 the C code of KSMBD and asked it to identify vulnerabilities. The model didn't just flag known vulnerabilities, it found this brand new one describing the exact flaw and the risk of a use after free condition. The vulnerability has been addressed in recent kernel patches. Users and administrators are strongly advised to update their systems promptly to mitigate potential risks. Now, can I be honest here, up to this point, this specific segment script was written by AI. I wanted to see how it changed since the last time I tried AI to write stories for ThreatWire, which, if you must know, was almost a year ago. It also felt right given the story topic, as well as the fact that honestly, Linux kernel vulnerabilities are a bit over my head sometimes. But what do you think? Could you tell it was written by AI? Please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of May 26, 2025. If you enjoyed this show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. I was thinking maybe that the next few ThreatWire writing sessions, I'd co-stream it on the Hack5 YouTube channel, not just on my own personal channel. Would y'all be interested in tuning in? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to find me online, you could find me everywhere at Ending With Ali. And as per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.